Hello guys, Burn just released a new feature called the Burn Shell. This feature will make it easier to run shell commands from JavaScript. In this video, we'll look into the different approaches for running shell scripts in JavaScript currently and how it will look in Burn with the new API. So first of all, let's create a problem that we want to solve. So let's start from scratch and create a bash script. So let's call it download bash.sh. So this is a bash file. So let's say we want to fetch all albums on uh, this URL and and save them in uh, say data albums.json so let's call it uh, album bash.json so in bash our script will be as simple as running curl and then the url and then data albums bash.json so let's create this uh, data folder so how do we run this bash script so in the terminal we just run bash download bash.sh so it will call the curl function and then save the data so if we look under data albums.json we'll see all the data saved there so let's say we want to go the extra step here and uh, use the jq utility to filter out the id title fields of uh, each album so that means we'll need to modify this command slightly so we'll pipe it to jq and use this uh, special argument which will filter out the id and title and then finally save the album in uh, the albums bash the json file so let's save this and then run the function again so if we look into our albums now we'll now only get the id and title fields so how would you do this uh, same functionality in node.js so let's implement the same thing in node.js so let's create a download node.js file so to be able to download uh, the file we need uh, a library that does this so let's install the burn add node fetch we can use the node fetch library for this so what we want is to do this in uh, js so this is the command we want to implement so let's import the fetch command from node fetch so our url is this so we want to save in this uh, data folder so let's get the dir name so dir name equals to a new url so this is how you get the current dir name in uh, node versions uh, i think 18 and above so you need to get it from the import.meta.url then you get the, the path name so which means the file path will be so something like uh, path that join the dir name then the data folder then the file that you are saving to so let's import uh, the path utility from uh, node so i think that's all so let's download it so result is equals to await we fetch the url and then get the json and then the albums will be mapping through our result and getting the id and title fields and then finally we save it so we save using the fs utility from uh, node fs and then promises so we await fs the write file the file path and then the stringified albums so let's try this so to run it it will be node download node.js so the file has been created so this is a similar file to the albums bash command so doing the same one line command in node.js should take us roughly 14 lines okay so what if we don't want to write all these 14 lines we want to run these inside uh, a javascript file without having to do everything from scratch so let's do that so let's create another file here called download node uh, let's call it bash.js so we're going to run the bash script here so again we are trying to recreate uh, this command so to be able to run this curl command from node.js we use uh, the child process uh, node api so we import uh, the spawn utility from uh, node child process so so const child is equals to so we spawn url and then we pass the arguments uh, to this url function inside the array so the first argument is the the url then we just do exactly what this is doing so the second argument is the pipe the third argument is the jq command and then the jq filter and then we are going to save to and then the file name and then uh, we can add extra options here for example um tell it to use the shell to execute uh, this command so this will use the default shell to execute this so to be able to observe the progress of uh, running this command we need to add some event listeners uh, to the child object so for example we can listen to so child.std 
out. So this is the standard output that will be printed uh, to the terminal when you run this command. So let's listen to the data stream being sent and then we can log it. And then we can also listen to error messages which are on STDR or uh, on error. So we can also listen to child on uh, error and then log the error. Also let's save this to albums node bash. So to run it we run node download node bash js. So you can see the logs are printed here but part of STDR I wonder why. But anyway if you go to albums node bash json file on the data directory you can see that uh, the file is saved successfully. So we have looked at three different ways of uh, doing the same thing. So with bash it took us one line, with download node manually it took us 14 lines and uh, with child process took us uh, like 30 lines. So this could be simpler if we used a library. So libraries are mostly wrappers around the child process dot spawn command. So they could be shorter if you run them using uh, wrapper libraries. But you get the idea. Okay, so let's look at the same thing but run with the, the new ban shell. So let's create a new one for ban. So let's call it uh, download ban. Yeah, let's make it a TypeScript file this time because ban will support this without any configuration at all. So to use the ban shell command, we import the dollar sign command from uh, ban. So to be able to get uh, these types uh, from ban, we need to add uh, the ban types. So ban add at types ban. So that should fix it and we should be able to get this. So to do the same thing in ban, all we have to do is await the dollar sign and then use the template literal after it so this looks weird but uh, this is called a tagged template literal where you can call a function by just using these two backticks and then the function name so all we have to do is uh, go to the bash script here and then copy the thing that you want to do and then put it inside the template so this should work out of the box let's try it so ban download ban okay let's uh, change this one to be called albums ban.json so let's run our command and then check and just like that we are able to run the command so the ban command is almost as short as the bash command so with the tag template literal you just pass in whatever you want and ban will sanitize it for you and then run it for you so because we are using the template literals here you can just pass in variables inside this for example we can just extract this into its own variable so like uh, url is equal to that and then just pass it inside here and then maybe uh, the file and then pass it inside here so that will still work without any problems so you can see how simple this looks so if you compare the three methods obviously writing the bash script yourself is the fastest and easiest way the download uh, node and the download node bash looks uh, too verbose for me so i prefer the ban syntax over these two okay so that's not all let's look into what other things that uh, this command does so let's create a new file here and let's call it uh, ban shell TS. So we can import the shell util from ban. So number one, we just realized that it can run any arbitrary command you pass to it. So for example, you can list files. So await with the ls command should work. So let's test that. Um, so ban, ban shell. Ah, so it doesn't work. But when I run ls shell here, you can see that it lists the files. So that reminds me. So ban has implemented some of these shell commands um, internally. So it doesn't actually pass these commands to our shell when you do this. It has its own shell implementation that does this maybe faster than even doing it using your shell. So for example, if we just run a less without any args, it should work. So ban and shell should list the files. And then if you want to list only the TS files, for example, you can do this and it will list only the TypeScript files. So does that work with the shell ls command? So let's try it. Yeah, so I think uh, the ls command is missing uh, some features from the internal ls implementation in the shell, like uh, the these flags here. So these will work, but won't work in BAM. So you have to take note of that. So another interesting feature is uh, you can change the current working directory when running 
these commands. So for example, we can change our directory to list all the files in the data directory. So to do that, we do shell.cwd and then we can tell it uh, to use the data directory and then list uh, all the JSON files. So let's try running that one shell. Interesting. So that also doesn't work. Mm. So let's try removing the flag and see if it works. Mm. So that works. That's weird. So what if we use uh, the other method of uh, changing the directory? So for example, you can just call the .cwd on uh, the shell function directly. You can chain it. So let's try. Uh, so that works. Let's try adding the flag dot uh, json files only doesn't work so this command looks buggy so we have to be careful about this okay so let's try other features that uh, the shell comes with so one of them is uh, environment uh, variables so you can do that via the dot n function so for example we can set um, let's say message to hello world and just um, run it so we can do this and then just echo the message the ban will automatically pick this from the end file so let's try it you can see that it works so pretty simple api and straightforward so another thing is that uh, you can read the results of uh, this and store them in a variable so for example we want to store this in a result so all we have to do is add a dot text function at the end and then we can log the result so that should log the hello world message so again very simple and very straightforward api so this also works uh, with piping so we can pipe the output of a command to a variable for example so for example we can have a buffer which is a javascript object so let's create a new buffer that is uh, say 10 24 bytes and then we can uh, say call the echo command on the message but pass it back to our buffer so we can just pass the object straight into the function and then we'll be able to log the value of that uh, buffer which would be the message here so if we run this we should still get the hello world message so that's just um, an example of uh, the commands that you can run with the burn shell but i think one issue that we are going to have is uh, because burn has re-implemented uh, a bunch of these commands by itself instead of passing them back to the shell you know uh, going to be doubting ourselves whether we are using the correct syntax because running the same thing in our terminal sometimes produces uh, different results so this is one issue that i've realized with it but apart from that i like uh, the simple api and the fact that uh, we can just dump whatever command we want to dump inside uh, the template tags and be done with it so that way it will be easier to run by scripts next to node.js without having to do all these weird stuff so that should be all uh, thank you so much for watching i hope the overview was helpful to you especially if you run a lot of bash scripts next to a javascript code so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video